Hello everyone, thank you for uh, joining me in this class and today we are going to discuss the assessment required for ICT PRG 405 unit which is the programming uh, unit and we are discussing the um, assessment AT1, assessment task one, portfolio of evidence. So when you go to the assessment uh, in your connect you will find this word file the one you see in front of you and you need to download this word file then fill the information so you'll put your student name student number and also the date you are submitting my name here as your assess, uh, assessor, you need to also put your signature. So you can insert your signature from a scanner or you take a photo with your phone to your signature and insert it here. And the date also when you signed this declaration, because maybe you signed this declaration today, then you will submit after a few days. So you could have two different days or uh, same dates. Then any uh, privacy, any instructions, in fact, you need to read this document like word by word and understand what is there exactly. So you can know what is required from your side in order to pass the assessment and submitting your assessment uh, on time with accurate information. So we have some general instructions here, and these are the instructions to student. So as an individual, so you are doing this uh, uh, portfolio of evidence as an individual, not as a group. You need to design, develop, then test a software application. You will uh, use one or more algorithm to perform uh, the desired operation. So. As we go through the assessment, you will know the details of what is required and you need to use uh, any IDE or integrated development uh, environment. Um, in our course, we used, Py uh, we used Sony for, for Python, yes. So you can use Sony or any other IDEs. Then uh, the criteria, the assessment criteria, you need to meet these uh, criteria and this is like a checklist. So you will design the algorithm or different algorithms to, per to perform uh, specific tasks. You need to design the algorithm using an abstract, abstract pseudo code. Uh, you will use structures, sequence, selection and iteration in the algorithm to perform their task. Translate the uh, pseudo code of the algorithm into Python language as agreed. Then you test the Python code for errors, omissions, and for mishandling of inputs and fix these errors. So you need to test the code before submitting it. Uh, provide internal documentation in the Python code. So with adding hashes and uh, we need to have internal documentation means within the code itself. External user documentation for a Python program. So you tell the user how to use this application and what is the purpose of uh, this uh, piece of software uh, with some explanation for different functionality of, for different functionalities of uh, bulk of codes. So you have up to two attempts as usual in TF assessments and disqualification. Uh, so I prefer you pass from the first attempt in order uh, for this to happen, you need just to meet the criteria. You need to review what we were discussing during the unit. Uh, you can ask questions. You can ask me, ask colleagues, you can, research online, but, but as we agreed, we don't copy and paste anyone else's work. So you write the work in your own words. Then 
uh, you uh, need to um, fill and answer all the questions. The purpose of this assessment, so you will develop one or more algorithm. So understand how a large software application can be broken into a number of components. We call them functions. You, you will design each of the function components in Sodo code, then translate them to Python language. Observe that each function provides a contract, what it guarantees to do to other components through its API application program interface. You need to test each function's API to verify that it meets the defined API contract that is supposed to or identify errors or omissions in the function's behavior and then fix them. If there is any error, you need to fix the error. Produce both internal documentation for the software application and the external documentation for the users of the application. So you need to follow all these points. Um, so what we are doing here from a cybersecurity point of view, it's testing and software verification. So we are scripting a complicated application out of simpler parts. So you need to prove by testing that each part does exactly what it's supposed to do and nothing else. Once, once the software is verified, so there should be no bugs. So this means attackers couldn't use these bugs to stop the functionality of the software or the uh, outcome or manipulate the data. Finally, to make this assessment even more relevant to cybersecurity, the software application that you develop performs a simple encryption and decryption algorithm. So you will be able to encrypt text messages with your program and send them to your friends for decryption. The purpose of the program. So I, I hope the previous part is clear and makes sense. So um, the purpose of the program, uh, that you are going to design and write. So we will perform what's so called Caesar cipher. So it's a simple encryption uh, method that uses 26 uppercase letters of the English alphabet given a specific encryption key. The Caesar cipher shifts the letters in the plain text, the unencrypted message, so that they are mapped to new letters in the cipher text, the encrypted message. As an example, imagine that the encryption key is the number three, so um, plus three. So this means that each letter in the plain text is shifted three places to the right. So the ABC will become DEF and so forth. So um, then letter B will become E, letter D will become G and so forth. So um, when you go near the end, we wrap around as the following uh, table. So all 26 letters in the plain text are mapped to 26 different letters in the cipher text. So we have another example here. So meet me in the hotel lobby um, at 3 p.m. So this is the message here in this part. And this is the encrypted message, ciphered one using plus three. So any spaces in the plain text are removed because they cannot be ciphered. So this means you will remove the uh, plain text from the user input you will remove, sorry, the spaces from the user input. So decrypt this message, then if we need to decrypt the message, we will apply a negative shift of the same distance. So minus three, for example, here. So it will uh, be decrypted. There are uh, some links here, so you can uh, read more about the history and it's a, it's a full article about Caesar cipher. 
it's uh, additional information. You don't really have to go there in order to answer uh, this assessment, but it's just useful. So um, user interface to the program, uh, you need to uh, create a program, uh, Python, of course, program called caesar.py. Then it will run from the command line in either Windows or Linux. Uh, the user will provide the shift value, for example, the key and the plain text. So the user will provide both the key, which is the shift value plus three, plus two, plus five, plus 10. And also the user will provide, provide the plain text to be um, encrypted. Then your program will perform the Caesar cipher encryption after uh, removing the uh, spaces as agreed. Okay. Here we have what's so called the defensive programming and your APIs. So in every section of your program, uh, you need to practice what's so called the defensive programming. You will assume that any input that you are provided could be wrong. So users can put some codes, some wrong input in order to corrupt the running. So you need to make sure and validate the user input. So either by accident or on purpose, like attackers, they will, you need to always check the input in every section of your program and deal with them. So what that means, you need to uh, check the user's command line values, as we uh, mentioned. Also for each and every function in your program, the function's arguments must be checked. So your options also could include uh, printing out an error message and stopping the program, uh, displaying a message on the screen, converting the input into something more suitable by removing uh, spaces uh, or rejecting uh, some uh, samples, deleting some samples, accepting the input as it is, regardless what you expect as inputs to each section and how you deal with all pos possible inputs must be documented. So as this forms your contract, the API with the other components of your program. As an example, what would you do if a user ran your Caesar? Uh, this is PY, this is a typo program with these inputs. So what will happen here? Uh, so what does a shift of 4,000 mean and can the Caesar cipher deal with punctuation and lowercase letters? So maybe you need to convert the lowercase letters to uh, uppercase. Uh, you remove any samples and we don't need to deal with that. Can we uh, shift to uh, plus 4,000? Try, try and see if you want to try uh, different values, of course, before submitting, as we agreed, you need to do that before submitting your code to connect LMS. Okay, I hope this is clear. If you have any question, please email me or let me know during the class time or on the chat server we have. So sudo code for the main program. So good practice to first design the sections of your program in an abstract sudo code in nearly English, as you can understand this language. You, you, can, you can check, just a moment. So you can uh, check your pseudocode algorithm for obvious errors and run your program by hand on a piece of paper. Um, so you make sure everything is fine. Once you are happy with the pseudocode, you can then translate this into the real source code language that you are using 
here we are using Python, then you test each part, then you test the whole application. So here we provided you with the top level pseudocode. You need to uh, elaborate more. Uh, so you need to break it into three sections. So um, check that we have the right number of arguments on the command line. If not, an error um, uh, uh, displayed. Read the values of these arguments, the shift value and the original text. Check that the values make sense. If possible, convert the values into new values that do make sense. Uh, you remove the I'm just giving you more hints and tips here. You remove the uh, spaces, you convert um, lowercase letters to uppercase letters, you remove any samples. So if this is not possible, it's an error, display an error, using the shift value, shift all the letters in the original text to make the new text, print out the new text. So. Um, you will take this uh, top level pseudocode and break it into three section or three sections, which will form the three tasks in this assignment. So task one, you write the code to convert the user's input into values that do make sense. In task two, you will write the code to shift all the text letters to do encryption. Um, in task three, you will write the rest of the code for the top level of the program. So task one in details. So here, as a defensive task one call, uh, it's uh, named converting the original text. So as a defensive programmer, we have to assume that the user will give us an input message on the command line, which has characters which are not uppercase but the Caesar algorithm can only encrypt uppercase letters. So we need to deal with this. We need also a function which takes as input uh, as the string of text that the user give us uh, on the command line. It will return a new string of text which is suitable for encryption by the Caesar cipher. So for example, all, all must be uh, uppercase. Then partial API for this function, it will be called converted to Caesar. Um, it will take one argument, a string of text. It will return a string of text. The letters in the argument will be processed as follows. So uppercase letters will be left untouched. Lowercase letters will be converted to uppercase letters. The full stop will be translated to the letter X. As X is rare, we can use it to separate sentences. All other letters in the argument will be discarded. So step one, under task one, we uh, write the pseudocode for this function. So you will design the algorithm for the function in pseudocode, semi-English. Then the algorithm must have these properties. Must be guaranteed to stop and return a string regardless of the argument it is given. Must obey the API contract defined above regardless of the argument it's given, must not crash or do unexpected uh, things, regardless of the argument it is given. The, alg the algorithm must be written in simple enough steps that it can be translated into a computer language like Python. So the algorithm must be exact and well-defined, not open to interpretation. You will use uh, some English words like if, while, and for, where they are suitable, this makes sense to an English reader. But they also indicate programming structures such, such as sequence, selection, and iteration to a programmer like loop. So giving you here the performance criteria and the points you need to cover. Step two, write tests for the function. So the only way that we can guarantee this function can meet its API contract is to give it all possible string inputs and check that the results or the resulting output string is correct in each case, as there are an infinite number of input strings. This is impossible. So to verify that your algorithm is correct, you will write a set of at least 10 test 
cases. Okay, at least 10 test cases for your function. Each test case consists of three things. The input string to, to the function, what should be the output string from the function, any comment about this test case. So as a test case writer, it's your job to think deviously, cunningly, and cruelly. What nasty test cases can you think of that may cause the function to break? Do the wrong thing. There is no point in testing your function with, a, with just nice and easy inputs. So three examples here. So, and you need to write another 10 te tests or test cases, you don't use these ones. So we have the uh, input string here, uh, output string comment. So hello there, hello there, spaces are lost. It's me, do you understand? So we are having X here, replacing the dot and question mark removed full stops becomes X's. I studied in 2018, so X and the numbers removed, digits are discarded. On paper, use both your algorithm and pseudocode and the inputs in your test cases to review your code and determine if there are any errors or omissions in your pseudocode. Below your test cases, Document how you perform the on paper review of your pseudocode and any changes that you had to make as part of this review. Step three, convert the pseudocode into Python. And you have your algorithm in pseudocode and you have tested it in, on paper to confirm the API contract. Now, you need to translate your pseudocode into Python, create a Python file called task1.py. In this file, write a Python function called converted to Caesar, which is the pseudocode translated to Python. Uh, you need to include internal documentation in your uh, Python code as follows. So at the top of your function, put in these comment lines. So author, hashtag author your name, then hash uh, uh, date that you wrote the code. Before the function, use comments to document the function's purpose and API. What does it do? What inputs does it expect? What type of result does it return? What will it do to the input or inputs? What sorts of input count as bad inputs? What will the function do with bad inputs? Yes, you need to write these comments. Put comments before each main section of your function's Python code. So, so before the function and also in each section of your, func of your function's Python code. Remember, useful, a useful comment explains what you are doing and why, not how this, this is being done. A programmer can read the code and see how the code works, but they can't understand why you are doing it. Hint, your pseudocode already explains how your algorithm works and possibly even explains why you are doing things that way. Why not reuse it as the comments in your Python code? Okay. We, we are meeting this performance criteria. Um, Step four, you will test your Python code and you need to put lines of code in the main part of your Python program to test your Python function using the test cases that you defined above. Here are some examples using the three test cases shown above. So test one result equals convert to Caesar, hello there. If result equals uh, hello there, print test one, okay, else print test one error and put the result. Then test two, test three. So use these tests to check your function for errors and identify any inputs that are not covered correctly by your code. If you find errors, 
use the debugging functionality in your IDE to single step your code, view the values of variables, etc. to identify your bugs and fix them. Uploading your work for task, task one, you are to upload these two files to connect. Um, so text or Word document containing your pseudocode for the convert to Caesar function and your test cases for the function, your review of your pseudocode and any changes that you had to make, a working Python program with the convert to Caesar function with testing code in the main program to verify that it works correctly. These are due by the end of uh, week three. Uh, of course, this is the author of this test uh, expectation, but we have something different. So please don't confuse yourself with this one. Okay. Task two. So we're done with task one. So what is required from task one? You will create uh, as per the steps, then you submit them in task one in your assessment area on connect. Then task two, encrypting the converted text. Now that we can convert the text entered by the user into a form, which can be encrypted by the Caesar cipher. So it's time to write a function to do this. What that mean? We need a function which takes as input. Then we, we also get the shift value and the string of text that has been converted. So it will return a new string. So here, this task two encrypting the converted text. So we will convert the text. You remember the conversion? Here. So this is just a conversion. This is not the encryption. We converted the text only. We did not encrypt yet okay we removed uh, spaces we replaced dots with x we converted any uh, small letters to capital letters okay we removed also uh, any numbers or symbols so we have here what's so called converted text then we need to take this converted text into the second function which will encrypt the converted text I hope this is clear. So we are here in task two, encrypting the converted text. And um, we need the function that will take the value and the string, then we will encrypt. So what is the API? It's up to you. We, we need a functional. Uh, application. So step two, st in, you create, design the algorithm for this function in pseudocode, semi-English as agreed, then the algorithm must have these properties. It must be guaranteed to stop and return a string regardless of the argument it is given. It must obey the API contract defined above regardless of the argument it is given. It must not crash or do unexpected things regardless of the argument it is given, similar uh, uh, properties as the previous pseudocode. So the algorithm must be written in simple enough steps that it can be translated into a computer language like Python. Algorithm must be exact and well-defined, not open to interpretation. So you can use if while I am for, so this makes sense to English reader and also it will indicate the programming structure like sequence loops and so forth. You need also to write tests for uh, this function. So at least 10 test cases for your function, put them in a table and each test case consists of four things. Input shift value, input string to the function, what should be the output string from the function? Any comment about this test case? So we have three examples. Please don't use them. You need to write another different 10 test cases. So input shift 3, minus 3, 13. And we have uh, some examples here with 
comments. So encryption, decryption. So, um, okay, so we used the 13 here. Then step three, we will convert the sudo code into Python. So we will create function called encrypt underscore Caesar. Um, of course, we'll practice, so brackets. Uh, so translate to function. At the top of your function, put your name, so documentation, internal documentation here, your name and date. Then before the function, again, use the comments similar to previous function. So you will follow the same steps with every function. So you document the function and what is the uh, the functionality and what you expect and all these mentioned details. Okay, so you must follow these instructions. Please do not do not skip them. Then you will test your Python code, and uh, you need to. Uh, test that and you can uh, also follow the same uh, methodology similar to the previous ones. Then upload your work. You will upload your work to task two in the assessment section. So text or Word document containing your pseudocode for the encrypt Caesar function and your test cases for the function. Also working Python program. So three things or it could be one word, one more document, including both. So the pseudocode and the test cases, then another uh, file with the Python program, uh, working Python program, of course. Don't worry about these dates, different than ours. Okay, by uploading that text to task two, we done with this part, I hope it's clear. Then we are going to task three now, the full Caesar program. We now have the top level sudo code for the Caesar program, get inputs from the user, deal with the input, encrypt the input, print out the encrypted function. So we have function called converted to Caesar. We have another function called encrypt Caesar. So convert to Caesar, then encrypt Caesar. So your task now is to create a single Python program called Caesar.py. It will contain the two functions from the previous tasks. It will read in the user inputs from the command line and perform the top level pseudocode as you have already been given this pseudocode. There is no need for you to write it. So write tests for the program. So we are saving you some time here. So step one, you write tests from for this program. And you are, of course, writing a full Python program and not just a function. However, we can still test it. So we need to, uh, as the user will enter two input values, if you remember the, the key and the text. So your program will out a piece of encrypted text. So to prove that your Python program is correct, you will write a set of at least, at least five test cases, at least five, so five or more. Okay, I prefer more, uh, more like uh, six, seven, eight, something like that. Okay, for your function, each test case consists of four things, input shift value, which the user would enter on the command line, um, the input string, which the user would enter on the command line, what your program should print out, any comments about this test case. So as this is a program and not a function, it can behave quite differently to a function. For example, the program might decide to print an error message. The program might decide to exit and not print out a line of text. So don't use any of the test cases that you previously wrote. Instead, think of new test cases that exhibit the behavior of your program, not of the function or functions in your program. Okay, so you, you create new cases for the whole program. 
step two will convert the pseudocode into Python. And as usual, you will document that. Your name is there, date, um, program purpose, and the API, all the details we covered in each function. Now you will do that for the whole program. Then you run the program from command line and use the tests to check your program for errors and identify any, uh, uh, any inputs that are not covered correctly, correctly by your code. Then uh, user documentation. So all software should come with internal documentation for both the programmer so that the software can be maintained and external documentation for the user so that the user knows how to use the program. Historically, the Unix operating system came with a set of manual pages. Each program had its own manual page with these sections, names, synopsis, description. And these are the examples we have seen during our uh, class time. So a good idea to have a look there as an example. Okay, so you can have a look and then upload your work. You will upload your work to the part called task three. And uh, here we need two files, Word document containing the user manual for Caesar PY program text or Word document containing your text. Test cases for the program working Python program called Caesar PY, which is fully documented. So it can be here one Word document, okay? or three if you want. So two or three is fine. Let me write that two or three files. Okay. Then don't worry about these dates. It belongs to different region. So now you're done with the three tasks. Good. Then collect everything in one zip file. Please give me your full attention collect everything in one zip file and upload this one to the final submission, which is saying portfolio final submission, assessment task one, portfolio final submission. So I hope this is clear and thank you for your time. And I'm sure that everyone will pass from the first attempt. Uh, we spent, um, enough time in discussing similar tasks and similar similar application please feel free to ask me questions uh, you can again you can use uh, email chat server on discord you can text me on my business phone you can also uh, ask me during class time or we can have a makeup class which is uh, additional session, we can plan together if you need anything. Please do not hesitate to contact me for any challenges, even personal ones that will affect the, your submission date. Thank you for your time and I'll see you in class soon.